Hi everyone, welcome to the Triassens Martial Art Channel. Firstly, as always, I wish everyone was still healthy and safe and keeping your social distancing, right? Never forget that. Then, as promised, this today's episode we are going back into the Taiji topic after last week's uh, slight detour into a completely different topic on the Miao Dao and the War Dao, right? The, the Chinese weaponry of the Ming Dynasty. So today we are going back to the Taiji topic. However, unfortunately, it will not be on a new topic that I had worked and planned for. Uh, this will be a follow-up video on the fourth episode of Fact or Fiction, where I discussed the claim of the Mi Chuan, or AKA Secret Young Family Taiji Group. Now, I am not doing this follow-up video because I find this topic to be so much so much so interesting and there's so much more I would like to talk about you know, uh, it's quite contrary right I don't really want to make this video um, however ever since I posted the last video there has been members from this Mi Chuan you know secret young family Taiji organization that has been posting comments uh, argument in my comment section on a quite a, on quite a regular basis and so yeah so that's kind of is forcing me to make a follow-up video. Now, of course, I was under no delusion that my video would be accepted by those people, right? Because, I mean, common sense dictates that when someone has invested decades of their life and time and effort in an ideology that I'm now exposing to be a false claim, it'd be very difficult for most of them to accept, right? They can't just denounce what their own master has fed them and claimed for decades and then you know denounce that and embrace the new information that I'm sharing. So I'm totally okay with that. I mean, you know, that's only normal. Right? Otherwise there wouldn't be so many codes that we can find around the world. Now I am not calling the the Mi Chuan Yang Taiji people a cult. I'm not saying that. But when when the truth is staring into your face and you choose to deny that to embrace an ideology that doesn't hold up or stand up to fact check and scrutiny then you know maybe you're not a cult but you are but like the flat earther at least right people who refuse to believe the the world is the, you know the earth is round despite countless evidence that can prove to them that earth is round so and I mean, not all of them are particularly bad. I mean, there are members who, who came to my comment section, tried to argue with me when they realized that they don't really have any solid argument and evidence. They just, uh, you know, choose to agree to disagree. And I can respect that, right? I am not trying to force all of them to agree to my point. I'm not trying to, to do that. It's okay to agree to disagree. Um, however, there's one particular person who has constantly been arguing against me in the comment section, okay? And of course, I am not a dictator, so I don't expect everybody to agree with me. I welcome argument. However, the argument should be constructive and sensible, okay? In the past, when someone presents a point of, an opposite point of view, a contradictive point of view, or an argument that are well-constructed and well-sort-of, even if I disagree with that person's point of view, I feel happy to explain to him why I disagree with them, okay? Because it feels like they have put in the time, effort, and intellect to engage with, my, with me in this conversation, and therefore I would show them the same respect. So that is perfectly fine. You know, I'm not trying to make everyone agree with me. However, right, uh, this particular person, his argument are very badly put together and very insensitive, okay? Um, for example, trying to derail the topic is not a sensible way to form an argument, all right? Trying to argue about a small thing that is not relevant to the main topic of discussion is also not a constructive or sensible way to argue. <sighs> trying to guilt trip me by saying why am I defacing and picking on a small Taiji branch and saying that I'm, you know, trying to pick on the, a man who's passed away long ago and therefore, 
is not alive to defend himself, right? This is not a sensible way to argue. And frankly, having a cake and eat two is also not a good way to argue. What I mean by that is this person has, in my comment section, at least three times, if I remember correctly, linked this picture here, okay? Initially, he linked this picture. Well, all three times he linked the picture and asking, how do I explain it? And I told him, I don't, I'm not aware that this picture need explaining, okay? So he, he initially linked this as evidence against my claim that Zhang Qinlin, right, was not on the disciple list of Yang Chongfu, uh, which he published in 1934, right? So let me just, in case you guys are still confused, let me write his name here. So the person that we're discussing today, or continue to discuss, is Zhang Qin Lin. Okay, let, let me just uh, erase how region here, just to avoid confusion. We'll add it in later if need be. And of course, he has a disciple called Wang Yan Nian. All right, so, so these are the two persons of intro we're going to discuss today. So, in my last video, I said that Zhang Qinlin's name was not found on the disciple list published in 1934 by Yang Chongfu, right, the third generation head of the Yang family. And then he linked me this picture, which is completely weird and not sensible, because what this picture proves is that Zhang Qinlin is, was indeed a disciple of Yang Chongfu. Now, I did not say he was not a disciple. In fact, in my last video, I stated pretty clearly that if he was the fact that he wasn't in the disciple list does not mean he was not a disciple, okay? So, linking that picture does not contribute to this argument. If I say he's not a, a disciple of Yang family at all, then linking the picture will be valid. But as it stands, that picture is not valid. And furthermore, this picture that he's linking, it contradicts to the claim of Wang Yannian. Because according to Wang Yannian, Zhang Qinlin is a disciple of Yang Jianhou, right, the second generation Yang family member, not his son Yang Chengfu. Which is why eventually I asked him, I said, the fact that you link this picture, does that mean you disagree with your own master, Wang Yannian, right? Does that mean you disagree with him and you believe Zhang Qinlin is under Yang Chengfu and not under Yang Jianhou? And you know what he said? He said he does not wish to engage in this topic of discussion. Well, like I said, you can't have a cake and eat too, right? You can't have both sides of the argument. You gotta pick a side. Either you stand by your own master's claim that Zhang Qinlin falls under Yang Jianhou and not Yang Chengfu, or you have to, you know, you have to believe that Wang Yannian made a mistake or made a false claim and then link that picture. You can't have it both ways. And this is the kind of uh, this is the kind of the quality of argument that I'm getting, and that's quite frustrating for me, okay? I don't mind people disagreeing with me, but at least have some common sense and logic when you are trying to formulate an argument. And um, well, while we're on that topic, right, while he's acting childish and you know arguing non nonsense like this, I actually went and digged up some more info. So basically, I looked at a version, a republication of the Yang Chongfu's book from Taiwan, okay? And in that book, under the disciple list, Zhang Qinlin's name was there. But his name was not on the mainland China's republication of the same book. Okay, so for those of you who might still be confused, um, yes, let's do it this way. So, Zhang Qinlin's name is like this. Zhang Excuse my handwriting, it's pretty bad, I know. Zhang Qinlin is like that, okay. You can see it, right? Yes, good. The person that was written on the Chinese version of the republication is... Oops. 
is Zhang Qing Lin. So Qin and Qing, those are not the same characters in Chinese. Now, given the new information that I acquired, it means that this could have been a typo on the mainland China publication site, right? Meaning that they made a mistake instead of using Qin, they use Qing. Now the reason I say might and not definitely is because there is actually a person called Zhang Qinglin at the same period of time. And we know this because he also wrote a book on internal martial art training. And his book had a foreword by the general and warlord Zhang Xueliang. And according to Zhang Xueliang's foreword introduction to his book, he mentioned that Zhang Qinglin was a military man right, who served in the army and had an early retirement due to injury. And from that, we can know for sure that Zhang Qinglin is not Zhang Qinglin. Because Zhang Qinglin, as we all know, has never served in the military. So, I am unsure as of now whether it's the mainland China publication that made a mistake and made a typo, or that you know, it's supposed to be Zhang Qinglin and in Taiwan it became Zhang Qinglin. I don't really know. Uh, the best way to find out is to actually find the original publication that was published in 1934. But unfortunately, I don't have the resource to find the original book. And all I can find are republications, some of which have the you know, Taiwanese one goes with that name, some of the Chinese one goes with that name, and some of the other republications, they completely removed the disciple list because they found that it was uh, not important, right? They only kept the other content on, on the training, the form, the photograph, and, and the information like that. They removed the disciple list. So unfortunately, from my current resource, I cannot get to the bottom of this. However, what I'd like to point out is that even if Zhang Qinglin was in the original list published by Yang Chengfu, okay, it still does not support Wang Yannian's point of view or claim. In fact, if anything, it further proves my own claim against Wang Yannian because I believe Zhang Qinglin is a disciple of Yang Chengfu and not of Yang Jianhou. And if he was indeed on the original list, that basically further proves my point. So I don't even know why this person is insist on arguing that he is on the list while still trying to support his own master's view, which means he's supposed to be the same generation as Yang Chengfu and the disciple of Yang Jianhou. That part is very confusing. So from here, I would like to say that for anyone who wish to you know, argue further in this topic, please decide which side you stand. Don't argue on both sides. You know, pick a stance and then argue. It's very childish to, you know, to have it both ways. It's, uh, it's senseless and stupid. Okay, now, with that, now after that, then he tried to drag me down to his level by saying that he has no proof of what he claimed is our tradition, and I have no proof of what I'm saying. Okay, so it's hearsay versus hearsay. Well, sorry to tell you that I do have proof on many of the things that I claim. I did not include this proof in the last video because I got a bit lazy, okay, and also because I don't have this evidence at hand. Like I mentioned in my other videos before, I am not a historical researcher. I'm only doing this because nobody else is doing it. Um, I'm actually a practitioner. I spend more time training than reading books. However, I do have friends who are historical researchers and they actually have archives that keep this information. I didn't want to trouble them every time I need something, right? Um, that's why I didn't ask them for this evidence last time. But because this guy you know, insists that I'm just making it up or hearsay versus his hearsay, so it basically forces me to contact my friend and ask him to send me the hard evidence. Uh, and now I have them, and that's pretty much why I'm making this video, because instead of having the time to spend on researching and making the next topic that I'm trying to make, you know, I have to spend this week's time and effort on making this, on researching this, which is why I'm going to have to make this video. And if anything, this will just further disprove my Indian's claim and make his lineage look even worse. So... You know, my advice is you know, know when to quit. Know that if you don't have the fact to back yourself up, agree to disagree and you can exit gracefully, right? Why drag it out and force me to bring more evidence against you? That is not sensible either. 
Okay, so now before we go any further and bring to my you know new, newly acquired evidence, we need to first establish the center of argument, right? So I'm sick of people arguing all over the place and missing the main point. The main point here is very simple. So first of all, if you were to argue against me, first be clear on what side do you stand. Do you believe Zhang Qinling is a disciple of Yang Chongfu or Zhang Qinling is a disciple of Yang Jianhou? Right? Make that distinction first. Take a stance and then start arguing. Okay? If you don't make it clear which side you stand, the rest of the argument is pointless. And just in case you are, you are not clear, according to Wang Yannian's claim, Zhang Qinling's full sender Yang Jianhou. Okay, now just in case this person or whoever else once again tell me that I have no evidence, you know, and maybe hint that Wang Yannian didn't say this. I'm not saying he did, he, he's doing this, but just in case he's trying to, to say I have no evidence, okay, I did look up various sources on Wang Yannian's text on the Zhang Shi Qinlin Xiao Zhuan, right? It's basically his like a short autobiography on his master, Zhang Qinlin. And all the various sources on the internet have the exact same text, which make me to which lead me to believe that the information should be genuine. And I tried to look for his publication, right? He published a book, I think in the either 1970 something or 1980. Now this book was published in Taiwan, so I do not have access to this book. And it's quite an old book, so now it actually costs like a couple thousand bucks. So I'm not gonna spend that money to buy this book just to read the the autobiography section, you know, to prove a point that is not sensible to, to do. However, I did manage to find pictures from, you know, bookshops, online bookshops that sell this book. And one of the pictures that was captured, basically the one you can see here, is it basically have a picture of Yang Jianhou. And it said that he's the second generation master. And then a picture of Zhang Qinlin. And underneath it says he's a third generation master. And I think this is more than enough evidence to show that Wang Yannian believed Zhang Qinlin falls under Yang Jianhou and not Yang Chengfu. Because otherwise, the wording underneath Zhang Qinlin should read fourth generation rather than third generation. Okay? So once we establish this, now we can look at the main argument. So the main, the main story that Wang Yannian basically told about Zhang Qinlin is that he was in the Yang family, and according to him, it was the third year of the New Republic of China, okay, which put that date to 1914, I believe. In my last year, uh, in my last video, I said uh, 1903. Yeah, unfortunately, the last video I was I made it late at night. My brain wasn't really working. I read Mingguo Sanian, and somehow I just automatically. So that means 1903 rather than the third year of the Republic era, right? Republic was founded in 1911, so it will be it will make it 1914. However, luckily it didn't it doesn't actually affect much. Oh, it actually, it actually doesn't affect the outcome at all. So according to Wang Yannian, okay, Wang Lai Sheng came to challenge Yang Chengfu on the third year of the Republic of China. Okay, so that puts it. 1914. Now, it is a matter of public record, okay, that Wang Lai Sheng was born 1903. So, if you use primary school math, you can tell that if Wang Yannian's story is true, at the time Wang Lai Sheng came to challenge Yang Chengfu, he's only 11 years old. 11-year-old kid challenging someone who's in his late 30s, how is that even possible? And if that did happen, why on earth would Yang Chengfu need Zhang Qinlin to defend him and fight in his place? It makes no sense at all. Now, another large part of the story is that Wang Laisheng came to challenge Yang Chengfu. Zhang Qinlin stepped up to fight Wang Laisheng and defeated him. And then Yang Jianhou saw how valiant Zhang Qinlin was and decided to call him to his bedchamber at the middle of the night to teach him the secret Yang style Tai Chi. This is the main key narrative 
for the secret tidy star to exist, this event has to happen this way. However, it is also a matter of public record that Yang Jianhou, okay, he passed away. Nineteen seventeen. So if you use basic math again, we'll know that the year that Yang Jianhou passed away, Wang Lansheng is only fourteen years old. I mean, it's getting a bit better. It's three years older than eleven, but still nowhere near big enough to challenge a fully grown man who has been doing martial arts for decades, right? Even if he, even if uh, Yang Chengfu isn't a great fighter. It doesn't take much to beat up a kid. 14 years old, okay? Um, and if Wang Haisheng gets any older, then Yang Jianhou would not have been around. He would have passed away already and cannot have seen the incident and therefore favors Zhang Qinlin and, you know, and pass on the secret knowledge of Yang Star. So the simple matter of dates and public record we can already put this whole case to rest, right? This entire narrative simply could not have happened the way Wang Yanyan claimed. And, you know, if it's up to me, that should be the end of the argument. There's nothing further to argue, okay? You can, you can deny this, you know, you can ignore this, but there's nothing to argue anymore. This is dead fact, okay? There's nothing, there's no room for argument. But... You know, knowing the way some of these people are, and I mean, I don't mean all of them are bad, right? There are people who are more open-minded in the organization. Not everyone is equally stubborn and, you know, and, and, and sensible when it comes to argument. I'm not blankly attacking everyone in the lineage. But the particular person that keep commenting in my comment section, I know this probably is still not enough to convince him. So, we're going to look at some further evidence. Now, lucky for us, this incident challenged Liu fight or, or you know a conflict, whatever you want to call it, between Wang Lansheng and Yang Chengfu was quite a big incident at the time. So unlike many of the other martial arts stories um, that don't really get recorded or don't really get much attention, this incident was actually mentioned multiple times on the newspaper, okay? which means we actually have some hard evidence that we can work with. Now, obviously, not everything written on the newspaper can be taken as 100% fact, but it's certainly more trustworthy than Wang Yanyan's own oral tradition, which, by the way, does not even add up chronologically, right? That just shows how little credit his oral re recount of the event actually has. Okay, so this whole back and forth argument that happened on the newspaper first started on the 6th of May, 1928. And by this date, we can again further prove that Wang account of 1914 is incorrect. And the, f and the account that Yang Jianhou was alive for this event to ha was alive when this event happened is also incorrect. However, if we take 1928 and we work out Wang Lansheng's age, he's at age around 25, which is a much more believable age to come and try to challenge Yang Chengfu than, you know, 11 or 14. Okay, so unfortunately, I do not have the original, a photocopy of the original newspaper article that was published on the 6th of May, 1928. However, I do have an article here that you can see, which is published on another article that recounts the incident that happened at the time. Well, so this photograph is taken from an article called Wu Shi, which means martial history, right? And basically the author took these newspaper articles from the time and placed them one on top of each other and reaccounted what exactly happened according to both sides of the story. And you know, for those who can't read Chinese, and I think even if you can't read, this would probably not be very clear for you to read. 
But basically what is mentioned here is that the first article was published in the Shanghai Shenbao newspaper 6th of May 1928 by a person who's using a fake name called Bi Wu. Okay, so that's not his real name. And we don't really know who exactly posted. So he basically made a post, made an article saying that Wang Lai Sheng went to Zhongyang Gongyuan, the central park. So that's the first thing that's already contradict Wang Yanian's claim. Wang Yanian claimed that Wang Lai Sheng went to the Yang family estate and challenged Yang Chengfu at his home. Okay, and that's clearly incorrect. Okay, Wang Lai Sheng went to the central park where Yang Chengfu actually regularly have classes. Now, naturally, this person who initially made the post is on the side of, of Wang Lai Sheng, either Wang Lai Sheng himself, or maybe his brother, or maybe a friend, we don't know, but he's clearly on the side of Wang Lai Sheng. In the article, he said that Wang Lai Sheng went there to challenge Yang Chengfu because Yang Chengfu was picking on, a, on another martial instructor in the same park, and it's causing him to lose students, and that is why Wang Lai Sheng went to challenge and, you know, to help out this this other martial instructor that has been picked on. According to Wang Lai Sheng's account, he defeated Yang Chengfu with ease and then defeated four of his disciples who tried to get up on him and then he left. Now obviously, we cannot trust everything Wang Lai Sheng says, right? And he does tend to lie when it suits him. So I'm not saying this is the hard fact. But, you know, bear with me for now, this is the first time this incident has been posted on the newspaper. And this incident, and this article basically upset Yang Chengfu, okay? And his disciple Chen Weiming, well, who was actually a very famous scholar in the late Qing era, and in any Republic era, right? he's a established scholar who actually was responsible for, for helping to, to put together the the, the Qing archive. So he happened to be in Shanghai at the time and obviously read this newspaper. And then he contacted Yang Chengfu and asked him what, what was this all about. And then he basically, after learning of what happened according to Yang Chengfu, he also wrote an article in response to the initial article. Now in the initial article, this person, whoever it is, do not mention Yang Chengfu by name, okay? Instead, he just said that it, there was an old master in his 80s that was, taught, that was teaching in the park. He didn't, he hides the name and he hides the age. Obviously, he didn't want to upset Yang Chengfu or the Yang family because they were still quite powerful at the time. So, Chen Weiming, right, Yang Chengfu's disciple, he started his article by saying that after, you know, asking around, there are no master at the age of 80 teaching in the Central Park. The only person that remotely resembles the person in the first article is Yang Chengfu. So Chen Weiming made, uh, wrote a letter to Yang Chengfu inquiring about this incident, and now he's including Yang Chengfu's reply. So according to Yang Chengfu's style of the story, that morning he was teaching his student. A young man came to him wanting to learn Tai Chi. And obviously he was very happy that he get a new student. So this guy said that he wants to test out push hand with him first. And Yang Chengfu obliged. But the moment they start touching hand to do push hand, in Yang Chengfu's own word, he says that this person, aka Wang Lai Sheng, Hu Xia Jue Shou. What then Hu Xia Jue Shou means is that he suddenly applied Jue Shou is kind of hard to translate. You can translate it into a, killer, a killing hand but that would be too severe. Instead, we should say that a non-friendly hand, right? So push hand, as we all know, is a friendly. You don't try to hurt someone. So by him saying, 呼下绝手, 绝手, would basically in this context should mean harmful, a technique with harmful intent. He doesn't say exactly what Wang Lai did, but basically something that was unfriendly and harmful, and he's trying to hurt Yang Chengfu rather than trying to do a friendly exchange of push hand. And according to Yang Chengfu, he basically says that um, he then deflected this harmful attack and then asked him again, what are you doing here? Are you part of the, you know, the sport association? Because they have like a sport association within the park. And this guy didn't reply him and instead he just left. So this is Yang Chengfu's account of the story. 
Now there's a few things to take note here. First of all, there is no account of Zhang Qinlin, right, who stayed up in Yang Chengfu's place to, to accept the challenge from Wang Lansheng. According to Yang Chengfu himself, he was the one that stepped up and offered to put that, accepted the push hand challenge. Now, unless you want to call Yang Chengfu a liar, who you know is the person who, well, who was the first, who was the person who was in the incident, right? He was the person involved in this incident. Unless you want to say that he is a liar, otherwise Wang Yanyan's account cannot be true. And keep in mind, Wang Yanyan's account. Wang Yanyan is a person who has never even seen the incident, right? Whereas Yang Zhongfu is the person, is the party involved in the incident. So personally, I would say his account is more trustworthy. However, his description of the outcome of this incident that the guy tried to hurt him, Wang Lansheng tried to hurt him, and he deflected it and then asked him what his true intention is, this part is suspicious, okay? Because if you think logically, if any martial master who's teaching, you know, in the area in the park, they should be very defensive, right? Especially to the right to teach as well as their reputation and fame. If this guy came and tried to hurt him, he should by default want to hurt him back. It makes no sense that he just simply deflected the attack and it's like, you know, what, what are you trying to, to, to do? That sounds good on paper, but in my experience, that is not what real martial artists do. If someone tries to hurt a, you know, a legit martial art master, he will try to hurt them back. So the fact that Van Lansheng didn't, instead, you know, he said he defended the attack, and then asking what his intention is, hence towards that he maybe he wasn't on the upper hand during that exchange. But of course, this portion is speculation, because according to Yang Chengfu's word, he did deflate the attack and then did not choose to pursue the attack. And he then said that because he saw the guy was really young and he didn't want to hurt him because he's too young. Right? That's basically his excuse for not you know, attacking back and put Wang Lansheng in his place. But I personally, right, I personally, my opinion is that he probably was, at, you know, he didn't come on top in the exchange and therefore didn't think he could take him on. So this is Yang Chengfu's account of the situation that he relayed to Chen Weiming, who then published on Shenbao, okay? It was published on the 9th of June. So the first was on the 6th of May, is when the first article was published about the, this incident. And obviously Chen Weiming had to send a letter to Yang Chengfu in Beijing, get a reply back, and then write up a text and then publish it on the newspaper. So this published on the 9th of June, 1928. And then over here you can see now this is a photocopy of the actual newspaper article that was published on the 2nd of July, 1928 by Wang Lansheng's elder brother, Wang Lai Tian. So in this article that was published on the same newspaper, Shenbao, right? They all published on the same newspaper. So, so on this article, Wang Lai Tian basically says that he has read the article previously written by Chen Weiming, and you know, and he says that Yang Chengfu's account of the event must be true. So basically, he's not trying to argue that his brother's account was the real one, right? He said, well, if Yang Chengfu says this, then it must be be, be true. But obviously, he doesn't actually mean this. It's just a, a polite way of agreeing to disagree. And then he further on by saying that he has not seen his brother in three years. And his family, from his parents to him, none of them agreed with when his brother took up martial art. Which, which is why his brother, Wang Lansheng, doesn't talk to them about his martial art training or journey that much. So he knows very little about what's going on in his brother's martial art life. However, he then says that he does know that his brother is currently writing a book and he, be, and he wishes to re-revive re the power or the, you know, the, the technique, the abilities of traditional Chinese martial art, of Guoshu, right, the art of the nation at the time is what it's called. He wished to make them, to make Guoshu better, which is why he always travel around seeking 
famous masters to test out his own skill in order to learn something new. What he's saying here is that his brother is not the fact that his brother went to challenge Wang Lansheng, I mean, sorry, went to challenge Yang Chengfu, was not of malicious intent. He simply wanted to test his own skill and to see how good Yang Chengfu really is. And then he said, Yang Chengfu claimed that because he saw Wang Lansheng was too young, therefore he does not wish to hit him or to, or to attack him. Wang Lansheng's brother basically said, you know, if if his brother only wanted to be famous, right, to have to boast fame by defeating famous masters, then when Yang Chengfu refused, don't want to hit him, then Ma Lai Sheng could already then turn around and claim victory and gain that fame. He would not need to xia jue shou, right, to use harmful attack to try to hurt Yang Chengfu. So according to Wang Lai Tian's understanding, the reason his brother tried to hurt Yang Chengfu was in an attempt to improve his own skill, right? To, to make the, the duel as real as possible, right? To test his own ability and test Yang Chengfu. That's why he attempted to use harmful technique or harmful attacks. And for that, Wang Lai Sheng's brother Wang Lai Tian apologizes. But anyone with you know sufficient Chinese literature skill would know that Wang Lai Tian did not truly or was not sincere in his apology. He basically made an apology in public so that this incident can die down. But you know, between each line he is basically hinting that his brother actually won that engagement, okay? And that Yang Chengfu is merely trying to cover up by saying that he didn't hate him because the, the kid is too young. But in actual fact, he couldn't beat him. That's why he didn't hit, hit him. So that is the undertone you know, or suggestion from Wang Lai Tian. So then after that, Chen Weiming made another post, which you can see here. This is again a photocopy of the actual newspaper. So this article was basically published on the 6th of July, 1928, and it's titled, A Notice to all martial art practitioners was in China. Okay, so basically, this, in this note, he says that he has known Yang Chengfu for many years, and he knows that Yang Chengfu is a very humble and kind person, and he doesn't hurt people. So again, he's trying to explain why Yang Chengfu did not retaliate against Wang Lai Sheng. Of course, you know, it could be true, or it also could just be more excuses to make Yang Chengfu's you know, excuse look more legit. And then he further by saying that Wang Lai Sheng received high education. Wang Lai Sheng was a college graduate, which at the time is very rare for martial art practitioner. So, he, so, so Chen Weiming said Wang Lai Sheng is a, has high education, and he assumed he must not be like those low social stand, you know, those low social class martial artists who goes around trying to beat up other people to gain more fame and reputation and trying to make money from teaching martial arts. So basically he's trying to to mock Ban Lai Sheng by saying that, you know, even though he has high education, but what he's doing is like those low social class martial artists trying to, you know, fight people on the street in order to get more students. So he's actually subtly mocking him, but in his actual take he's saying that he knows Ban Lai Sheng has high education and therefore he could not have been the type of person who goes around beating up other people to increase his own fame and get more students, right? He's actually saying the opposite of what he means. And then he goes on saying that, you know, the essence of Guo Shu or the, or the goal of Guo Shu is to, is to make the country stronger and people should not hold grudges and should not have um, grudges between style, right? Everyone should be one family and improve together. So basically after that, he's just saying some some big, some nice generalized words to basically make it make it sound that they are the bigger man in this incident, right? They they have the, the they are the, the gentlemen, or, the, or you know they're the bigger man, and they're not gonna you know hold this grudge against Wang Lai Sheng. That's essentially what this text means, and this pretty much ends this whole back and forth argument over newspaper in a very subtle way, right? None of them 
not uh, Chen Weiming and not Wang Lightian openly argued against each other, but they all hide, they will hit the true intention between the lines. So, obviously these articles is not enough to determine who came on top between Yang Chengfu and Wang Lightsheng. Personally, I lean toward Wang Lightsheng coming on top, okay? But not in an honorable way, not in a fair and square way, which is why Yang Chengfu disagrees. And the reason I believe this is because Yang Chengfu did not retaliate, simple as that. And the fact that afterwards Wang Lightsheng is the first one to post, you know, to let people know about this incident. If he actually got beaten and his ass handed to him, right, he would not post this because if he because that would be very easy to disprove, right? There are other people in the park at the time. So if he actually was beaten fair and square, or at least beaten convincingly, then it would be stupid for him to claim he won because everyone would then stand up and say, you know, no, I was there that he did not want. So the only reason, the only reason that he would be the first one to expose this situation and not Yang Chengfu is because he actually do think he has won. And again, from Yang Chengfu's take, it also shows that he didn't want to claim that he won the engagement either. He simply said that he deflected the initial attack and then stopped the fight and then, you know, and so that he was really young and don't want to hurt him. Um, it could be true, but I don't find it to be likely to be the truth, okay? But obviously, the outcome is opinionated, it is speculation, this part is no fact. However, even though we can't determine the outcome of this conflict, we do know for sure that, number one, this happened in the Central Park, and did not happen in Yang Chengfu's family estate. Secondly, there is zero involvement of Zhang Qinlin, okay? He did not step up to the challenge instead of Yang Chengfu. Unless both Wang Lansheng and Yang Chengfu lied, and that is a pretty far-fetched claim, because these two are the people involved in the incident, and we have physical articles that reaccount their account of the story, of what happened. Whereas, what we know from Zhang Qinlin came from Wang Yannian, who was not even there at the time. And of course, even despite the outcome of this fight or the involvement of Zhang Qinlin, okay, it still does not explain how Yang Jianhou could have taught secret Taiji to Zhang Qinlin. Because simply put, this happened in 1928, right? That is 11 years after Yang Jianhou has passed away. So unless Zhang Qinlin can somehow summon the spirit to teach him. Otherwise, this whole story that Wang Yinian claims is just simply impossible. No matter how you cut it and argue or try to speculate, it just cannot happen the way Wang Yinian claimed it happened. All right, and over here is again a photocopy of an article that was published on the 17th of February, 1935, in a publication called Guoshu Zhou Kan, which means Koshu Weekly, right? Koshu is the name for Chinese martial art during the Republic era. So within this article, there's a whole piece on Wan Lai Sheng, like, you know, when, where he was born, when he was born, and his life story. And in the word, the part that I labeled, well, well outlined was the red, that's basically a piece where they talk about Wan Lai Sheng going to the Beijing Central Park, which is currently a, which is then known as Zhongshan Gong Yuan, and then be helping a friend who was supposedly bullied, and then challenged a certain martial art master and won. So in this article, they did not say specifically who this master is, but everyone would already know they're referring to Yang Chengfu. Okay, they did not want to upset the Yang family because they're still quite influential at the time. So they uh, didn't mention the name of the person. Now, obviously, you can't trust everything you read, you read in articles, okay? So the fact that this article says this does not mean it's all true. However, if we take into consideration of this article and the few articles beforehand, we can more or less figure out what the most likely result of that exchange was, okay? First of all, first, firstly, 
Uh, Yang Chongfu saw the story, said that Wang Aisheng tried to hurt him with a harmful technique, but it didn't work. However, Yang Chongfu didn't say he defeated Wang Aisheng. Instead, he didn't. Instead, he said he was too young, so he didn't want to hit hit him. Um, was on Wang Aisheng's side, he clearly said that he won the exchange. He goes away. He goes around everywhere telling people he won the exchange. And it was even written in these articles. This is not the only article. It's the only one I can find, but there are other articles as well. So for him, it was a clear victory. So when something like this happens, right? Generally, what this means is that there was not a clear victory. In other words, they didn't knock each other out or have like a TKO or a submission or, or cripple someone. There's no visible victory like that, which is only reason why both parties can claim this. Okay, but clearly Van Lai Sheng believe he won this exchange. And obviously, there are no evidence to prove him otherwise. Otherwise, the Yang family would not allow him to keep saying this, right? It's because the Yang family, other than social pressure, they also don't have good enough evidence or proof to say that nope, Wang Yansheng lost. You know, like you know, either Yang Chengfu kicked his ass or someone else kicked his ass. They don't have proof like that. That's the only reason why Wang Yansheng could go around telling everyone he won. So the significance of this. Along with all the other article, is not to say that Wang Lancheng definitely won hands down, but he most likely came out on top of the exchange. And furthermore, it disproves Wang Yanyan's theory of how Zhang Qinlin came out and fought Wang Lancheng instead of Yang Chengfu and won easily, and Wang Lancheng escaped. Right, so that whole story cannot be true. If Wang Lancheng actually fought Zhang Qinlin and lost, um, then he wouldn't go around telling people he won, because that, that would be stupid, okay? That is very, very easily to disprove. And of course, you know, in Wang Yan's story, there's even involvement of other martial art figures at the time, like uh, Liu Baichuan, who then, you know, tried to challenge Wang Laisheng's own master, Du Du Xinwu, and, you know, it kind of it, it escalated according to his story, and none of those things actually happened. Liu Baichuan did not have a grudge against Du Xinwu, and he did not, like, you know, try to kick Du Xinwu, and Du Xinwu jumped onto a roof, all of that story is fabricated, okay? So, based on all this historical evidence, we can pretty much say for certain that uh, the event did, definitely did not happen according to what Wang Yanyan claims. And, um, and Zhang Qinglin may or may not have been present during that day where Wang Yanyan came to Chan Yang Chengfu, but he definitely did not play a major role in this incident or, you know, or defeat Wang Yanyan in, in any way. And, you know, and because of that, the whole story of him defending Yang Chengfu's honor and therefore was part of the secret knowledge of Yang family that would form the Mi Chuan Yang style Taiji, it just simply cannot be true. And I think that is enough to settle this argument and put it to rest, okay? And like I said, I don't expect people from the Mi Chuan Yang family Taiji to agree with me or to denounce the teacher's claim of the story. You are free to believe whatever you want to believe and free to agree to disagree. However, I do ask, if you want to argue further on this topic, please bring facts that can dispute this, okay? Dispute the date of when Yang Jianhou passed away, the date when Wang Lansheng was born, the date when this incident took place, right? The legitimacy of the newspaper article. If you can't dispute these things, then let it rest and not when you beat, okay? And let's just leave it at that. And of course, like I've explained in the last video already, but it seems, you know, uh, some of these guys never paid enough attention. So I'm going to say this again. This video, or the entire fact or fiction series of videos, is only here to examine claims, stories, and myths, and legend, okay? It's not here to, 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 part, you know, to pass judgment or criticism on the style itself. So, all I'm saying here is that the story is false, the claim of how the secret Tai Chi came about is false, alright? Uh, there's no doubt about that. It doesn't mean that Tai Chi is bad. But of course, that also, also doesn't mean that Tai Chi is good, okay? Um, ultimately, Chinese martial art, any martial art, is a martial art. You have to talk with your hand, okay? Your ancestor could be the best in the whole universe. If you can't do the same, it means nothing in present day. So, I see very little point, um, you know, for people to hang on to their past 
grandmaster or, or founder and say, you know, uh, they got secret knowledge and this and that. Okay, even if you do have secret knowledge, I mean, what can you do to, to today? Um, you know, can you come up and fight high-level martial art practitioners and win? Can you do push and against high-level martial artists and win? I mean, if you can't, then, you know, then even if you really do have the secret knowledge of young family, I'm, I'm not saying they do for any, for, from, for any stretch, right? But um, even if they do, if they are not good at talking with their hand, it absolutely means nothing, all right? So again, I'm not saying they are bad in Tai Chi. I don't know them enough to pass judgment. But the point is, this whole secret lineage or, or, or the true lineage or the pure lineage, you know, these kind of claims that we find all over Chinese martial arts are actually very bad for the growth of martial arts. They're like a plague, okay? Um, they are partially what holds Chinese martial art back. Everyone is so so focused and so fun about their own secret lineage, right? They don't actually ask practical questions. Like, you know, if I go into a ring or if I go on the street, who can I beat? How easily can I beat someone? How easily can I beat someone that's untrained? How easily can I beat someone that is trained? Up to what level of of, of skill of skilled fighter can I beat? Can I beat amateur sandal practitioner? Can I beat professional sandal athletes? Can I beat you know provincial level sandal people? Can I beat national level? These are the questions you should be asking if you're talking about training martial art. And if you're doing this for health, then then frankly, um, you know, secret secret lineage or not really don't matter because you know in this case clearly their story is based on a secret lineage that teaches fighting skill, not a secret lineage that makes them live longer. Okay, now I know that uh, Zhang Qinli has another Taoist lineage, supposed to have like, you know, secret in, inner elixir training and that longevity stuff. We're not talking about that, right? We're just talking about Yang family Tai Chi. So in this story, you know, Yang Jianhou supposedly imparted the secret Yang knowledge Tai Chi for combat, not for living longer. So if you really want to prove that you had the secret knowledge, prove it with your hand, okay? Go and defeat recognized fighters, and then, even if the story is bogus by everything we've, we've analyzed so far, then at least you are proud of your own skill, right? You can't claim that you have a true Tai Chi because, you know, you're, you're doing better in, in combat. Otherwise, you know, it means nothing, absolutely nothing. Alright, so for the rest of you, I um, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I know this is pretty much beating on a dead horse and repeating the same stuff, but unfortunately, I hope you do see the necessity of what I have to make this follow-up video. And next week, we'll hopefully make, we'll be on a completely different topic, on a new topic that's probably related to Tai Chi again. And of course, if any of you have a topic that you would wish me to cover, you can always leave them on the comment section and I will try my best to do so. But do keep in mind that, um, you know, my knowledge is not infinite. There are things that I don't know or I'm not well versed in. For example, there are people who wish me to talk about uh, Yang Shouzhong, right, the eldest son of Yang Chengfu, but he lived most of his life in Hong Kong. I'm well versed in stuff that happens in Beijing because I'm from Beijing. Um, my father is part of the martial community in Beijing. I spent many years in the martial community there, so I know more about things happening in Beijing and I do by extension know something some of the stuff that happened in Shanghai and Tianjin etc but I know next to nothing about stuff that happens in Hong Kong so unfortunately I can't just I can't cover Yang Shouzhong's life story because I simply don't know enough right, of what happened that far south but things that I do know of you know that people request I'll definitely make an effort to cover them in the near future so thanks for watching this video if you enjoyed it please subscribe to my channel so you can get up to date with my latest content and if you would like, please support me on Patreon, that will help me greatly in making quality videos consistently in the near future. Alright, and here I would like to give a special shout out to uh, Tom OG Crane. Uh, thanks so much for your support, and, yeah, and your, you know, your support is very much appreciated. Welcome to the, my, my Patreon support family, and you know, if you have any questions, um, queries, requests, feel, always feel free to contact me at any time, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, enjoy my exclusive content and yeah, hope you enjoy your due time with us. Thank you so much. And I will give a shout out to all my Patreon supporters. You guys are great. Thanks for all your support and help which enables me to continue making videos that can help people have better understanding on both the practical and the historical side of Chinese martial art. Okay, without you guys' support, I will not be able to make videos on a, on a constant basis. So thanks everyone for supporting me. And lastly, Remind everyone to stay safe, keep your distance, be patient, and you know, keep yourself safe. Thanks for watching Travis's martial art channel, and I'll see you next time.